it just feels like a weird card. It fits into the Amex puzzle, but there's so much overlap. What's up guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we're looking at the American Express Green and seeing how it fares in 2023. In this video, we'll look at the basics, four key considerations and deep dives, and then look into some setups. Huge favor before we dive into everything though is to give this a thumbs up. Very stupid, but just the nature of the game. And if you are someone that's new to the channel, you like me over analyzing credit cards, maybe taking some cool trips or getting extra cash back from it, then consider subscribing. Starting with the multipliers, the Amex screen gets you three X back on travel, including hotels, flights, and more, three X on transit, and three X on dining. You also get one X back on everything else. The multipliers are a huge value prop of the card, and for some people, it might be a better option compared to the gold or the platinum, but it does depend on you. There's a lot to dissect with the multipliers, so we'll cover that in the midsection, but just know that it's a lot broader and covers more ground than both the gold and the platinum. One big reminder is that the green card does earn MR points, membership award points, which is both good and bad. If you're on team cashback, then maybe not the best. The reason for this is because the base redemption as a statement credit is only going to be 0.6 cents per point. This means that even though 3x sounds amazing, it's only about 1.8% cash back. And to be fair, there is a gigantic range for this and there are other tools you can use to improve that number. In fact, we cover all 17 methods in another video. So if you do wanna get a Schwab card or a platinum business and a bank account with them, then there is more play. If you don't like jumping through hoops though, that bottom number is 0.6 cents per point. Okay, what if you're on team travel? The main draw of American Express points is that you can transfer them out to partners and generally get a lot more value. It's not always going to be the case. There's going to be some weak spots, but this is how normal people end up flying first in business and just taking those cool trips. This is when you transfer American Express points to partner points. And for American Express, I'd say that there's maybe three or four key ones. Singapore Chris Flyer is a pretty good one, along with ANA, Virgin Atlantic, as well as maybe Hilton. For Singapore, the draw is going to be Singapore Suites as well as Singapore First. Virgin Atlantic is one of the best ways to book Delta One Suites, along with a a First and a a Business. If you are struggling with availability for a a then it might make sense to transfer to a a The reason for this is because even though it is a bit more expensive in terms of the points that they want, you do have a lot more availability. Especially if you are trying to go during more of a peak season, whether that's Cherry Blossom Festival, Golden Week, or just the holidays, it probably makes more sense to go through a a Hilton is another option, but I'd say that it leans more towards aspirational properties like Conrad Bora Bora or Waldorf Astoria Maldives. I would hazard against transferring points to do domestic stays because the value just isn't there. For most people doing this type of travel, the target is two cents per point. In that case, three X is about 6% in value. Note that two cents per point is just a target. Some people do end up getting more value, but it's a function of how you wanna use those points and whether you would have booked that anyways. So yes, you can get 10 cents per point, but two just feels like a fair number. Okay, the card sounds great. What's the catch? The green card does come in at a 150 annual fee and it's not going to be for everyone. If you are someone that spends a ton, then mathematically you can't break even, but there's also two credits that can help you offset that fee or at least make it a bit more reasonable. The first credit is going to be for clear. This allows you to digitally verify your identity to move faster through select airports and sporting and music venues nationwide. You can kind of think of this like a fast pass and in the case of the airport, there's two lines. It allows you to skip the first line. Even if you have TSA pre-check, this still can be valuable. So we'll cover that a bit more in the midsection. The green comes up up to 189 credit for this service. I'd say that there's two main ways to use this. Number one is to get the service yourself and use it for yourself. Number two, if you already have it, to add family members or friends. So Clear allows you to add up to three family members or friends to your account for 60 bucks each. The reason you might already have it is because a lot of airlines do have partnerships with Clear, meaning that you might have it at a discounted price or even for free. For example, for Delta, if you have Delta Diamond, then you get this as a perk. If you have platinum, gold, or silver, then you get 40 bucks off. And then even if you don't have any status and you just made a Delta account, you still get 10 bucks off. With this and a lot of other credits, an important question to ask yourself is how much you would otherwise pay for the service if this credit didn't exist. So for me, I think I'd happily pay a hundred bucks for clear, but if it was at 189 and I had to pay that out of pocket, I'd be more hesitant. In that case, for someone in that position, you could argue that the credit is only worth 100. The second credit is up to $100 for Lounge Buddy. The easiest way to think of it is like a Yelp for lounges or some other review site where you can also book lounge visits. Whether this is valuable depends on you. So do you like lounges at all or do you not like lounges? Do you actually go to the airport early enough to enjoy it? Also, do you have other tools like Priority Pass or the Platinum Card? Even if in specific lounges, some of them are going to be great while other ones are pretty mediocre. The best measuring stick is going to be the value that you derive. So if it's a $100 lounge, but you feel like it's only a 20 buck lounge, then it's only really worth 20. 
We'll look at a few examples in the midsection, and there are some good and terrible examples. This brings us to the effective annual fee. So the card has a 150 annual fee, but you get up to 289 in credits. For some people, and I don't think it's most people, it might be a money maker because the credits are technically worth more than the annual fee. For most people though, I think you could easily argue that the credits here are not as liquid and as useful as a lot of other credits. Still though, I think it can make the 150 less painful. For example, if you value the credits at about 50% of their face value, then you're getting 145 in credits. 150 minus 145 is a $5 effective annual fee, which isn't too bad. Even if you value the credits at just 25% of the face value, it's still not too bad. In that case, the effective annual fee is about 78 bucks. As you can tell, there are a lot of variables that just make it super confusing. If you do want to simplify everything, we do have a calculator. If you Google Amex Green Ask Sebi, it should pop up. It simplifies all the nonsense, looking at both the intro bonus, the amount of money you spend, and also the value of the points. It also factors in the credits and spits out numbers to help you make a final decision. End of the day, the goal is to help people make educated decisions, so I think it should be useful. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether it's the green, pretty much any other card out there, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. As always, make sure that the cards are competitive, that the card makes sense for you, but otherwise, it is a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. For part two, we'll do a deep dive into four key sections, the two multipliers, so transit as well as travel, clear as a credit and how that might tie into TSA pre-check and then lounge buddy and a few examples. With the green, you get three X total points back on transit. This includes trains, taxis, ride shares, ferries, tolls, parking, buses, and also subways. By itself, that sounds pretty standard, especially if you are coming from Chase. Surprisingly though, within the American Express ecosystem, it is kind of a standout multiplier. Right now, there's only two cards that offer this, the blue cash preferred and the green. If you are someone that lives in, let's say New York, this can be super beneficial, especially if you also take the trains up and down the coast to places like Boston. Even if you are in a city that's more driving focused like Houston, it might still make sense for tolls. The travel category is pretty much the same idea, but substantially broader because of how much people do spend on travel. The green offers three X back on travel, including flights, hotels, vacation rentals, and a lot more. Funny enough, they even have their own little section within the American Express FAQ for different categories. For travel and for the green card only, it includes airfare, even if you are chartering flights or booking private jets. Also hotel stays, timeshare rentals, and vacation rentals. Car rentals are also included, along with other travel purchases, such as cruises, tours, and vacation packages. Okay, what are you talking about? The Platinum card is a travel card. It has to have these as categories. The Platinum is one of my favorite cards out there, and it does have travel, but only specific things. Per the terms, for air tickets, it's only once purchased directly or through AmexTravel.com. For hotels and flight and hotel packages, those have to be through AmexTravel.com as well. They even have a separate section below telling you travel that does not count. This includes chartered flights, tours, cruises, and most vacation packages. With the gold card, you have the same problem. It's only supposed to be for flights, but directly of airlines or on AmexTravel.com. And to be fair, there have been data points about exceptions in the past, especially with Expedia because American Express partners with Expedia. I guess on the back end, it still can work if it's Expedia, but yeah, I wouldn't rely on it. The main point being that the green card might be a better travel card than even the platinum, depending on what you're booking. If you are a traveler and you're running an American Express only setup, there is a pretty strong argument to have this card. More on this towards the end where we'll talk about setups. Clear is another polarizing perk. So the main draw being that you can skip one of the two lines if you are using it at the airport. Okay, I spent way too much time making this. Hopefully it makes sense. And if you are someone that's not familiar, hopefully this helps. When you're at the airport, there's two separate lines, the standard line and then the TSA pre-check line. Normally you line up to get to the counter where they check your ID as well as your boarding pass. If you have clear, you skip to the front of that line. You still need to go through security by itself, whether it's TSA pre-check or standard. So even if you have pre-check, it can help you skip that first line, which can be super useful if it's busy and there's a lot of other travelers. Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of factors to consider. So do you go to the airport early such that maybe this is not a benefit and how often do you fly? Also, do you have this as a perk from another card like the Platinum? Mandy and I generally fly one to two times a month and sometimes we go to the airport and there's no line because it's super early. On some other days, especially around holidays, the outside line, the standard line, could easily be 45 to 60 minutes long. If you are someone that travels more around those times and having clear is the difference between making your flight and missing it, then it can be pretty useful. 
Well, if everyone has clear, then no one has it. Yes, but the green card and the service has been around for quite a while. I think there are more users now, but it's nowhere near saturation. Case in point, everyone has TSA pre-check, but if you go to the airport, that's not the case. Obviously, it depends on when you fly, but if I had to make a cheat sheet, I think if you have TSA pre-check, then it's a nice to have. You don't really need it. It's probably not going to make that big of a difference, but if you only have standard, if you don't have pre-check, then it can be a lifesaver. Last one is up to $100 in lounge buddy credit, and this one's also another controversial one. I'd say that there's two main considerations. If you already have other lounge cards, then can it get you into other lounges that you otherwise don't have access to? So for example, if you have a party pass card and you can get into any party pass lounge, are there any lounges within this network that can be useful? Number two, for people that are just starting out travel, this might be a good way to test out party pass and other lounges and to see if you care about any of this stuff at all. As a filming in the US, they have lounges in the following airports. And note that there are some airports missing such as SFO and LAX. Okay, so what lounge options do you have? If you take a look at Vegas, they have the Club LAS. Here, they're going to charge you 50 bucks. And if you look at the lounge, I consider it a five or maybe 10 buck lounge. It's not too bad, but it's more snacks and yeah, nothing to write home about. Maybe add an extra five or 10 bucks if you are drinking. It also is part of Priority Pass, which does diminish the value to me. Speaking for ourselves, Mandy and I generally avoid this lounge because it feels like it's not worth the hassle. Even if we are sometimes closer to this lounge than the Centurion Lounge, we'll still opt for the Centurion Lounge. Given everything, this is one of the more bearish options. On the flip side, let's look at JFK. So you have two good options on the right-hand side, Lufthansa Business, as well as Turkish. Both of these lounges run you $49 per visit. The Turkish lounge is part of Priority Pass as a filming, but it also does feel like a nicer lounge than the club. To me, these are $20 lounges, maybe 30 with alcohol. If you are taking one trip a year and you can't justify a travel card yet, then this might be a good alternative. If you are on team travel, then there might be some use cases that are not covered by Priority Pass, but I haven't really been able to find any recently. I know in the past there were a few, especially for Dubai, but yeah, this time I'm not really seeing anything. So let me know if you have any interesting data points. Okay, so spill the tea, is the card worth getting? How should you play this? I think there's three main use cases. Number one, this is a great pickup if you are someone that's new to the travel game, but you wanna test out that premium travel card without necessarily committing 550 or 695. Think about the person that does maybe one international trip a year, they want a taste of it without the big commitment. Number two, for team travel that does spend a lot of money on travel, but who's running a pure American Express setup. In that case, this can act as a pretty good catch-all travel card, and even if you have the golden platinum, it is a weakness and this can be a good fit. Again, I love the platinum card, but there are a lot of categories that it just doesn't cover. I'm not really a cruise person, but a lot of relatives are, and in their case, they would benefit from the green. I also would be super careful of this though, because there are a lot of perks that might be useless. So for example, the lounge buddy credit as well as clear might be valueless because you already technically get those from the platinum. Very much a math-based decision at that point, so make sure that the numbers work out. Number three, testing it out and seeing if you like it. For that, can't be aware that there is no downgrade path to a no annual fee card. The green, the gold, and the platinum are part of their own little family, so the green card is the bottom card. In that case, you are stuck of a keep, cancel, or maybe upgrade decision. There's not really a downgrade path. If you are looking to build out a setup, I think a lot of it depends on if you only want to have American Express cards. So if you are someone in the early game and you don't want to get too many cards, but you still want to have that travel card with the green, then maybe consider something like the Saver 1. That gets 3% back and technically 3x Capital One miles on grocery stores, entertainment, as well as streaming, which is a pretty good mix. The City Custom Cash might also be a great catch-all for groceries. If you are running a pure American Express setup, this might be an alternative to the gold card. For example, if you don't really cook at home, then you might actually be better off of the green rather than the gold. Almost forgot the most important question, whether the card is metal. They did relaunch it in 2019 with a different design and the higher annual fee, and it is more focused on the environment, so instead of metal, it's actually 70% reclaimed plastic, and specifically plastic from beaches, islands, and coastal communities. Main takeaway, this is a pretty good catch-all card and a pretty good workhorse, especially if you are someone that travels and you're not just booking flights directly off airlines and booking hotels through American Express. At the same time, it is kind of a weird card because even though it fits into the American Express puzzle, there's just so much overlap. I know why they do it because they do want market share, but it is still annoying. 
If you're in the early game, this might be another one and done card like the City Premier that you kind of just run through as your main card. If you're in the late game, it might be something to test out while you're gardening for the other systems. Again, if you do want to learn about cards, whether this one or pretty much any other card out there, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a green tea cup emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on the card? So what do you like, what don't you like, and have you gotten it or have you avoided it because maybe it doesn't make sense given your circumstances? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.